Tonight on CTV, we'll take a look at a new impending lawsuit against CSU and updates on the Cameron Peak fires. Then find out about voting in the national and ASCSU elections, as well as the update on Fort Collins stock show. All that and more on CTV News, starting now. Good evening, Rams. I'm Jen Platero. And I'm Ren Wadsworth. We hope you're all having a great Tuesday, Rams. As of Monday, September 14th, the Cameron Peak Fire has remained at roughly 102,000 acres. The near 10,050 personnel have gained an estimated 4% natural containment of the flames, which originally began burning after a suspected human case on August 13th. Now, a month after the fire started and destroyed a total of 54 structures and 25 homes, one of which was a historic Poudre Canyon home dating back to 1885. The current firefighting efforts include a multi-pronged approach at the west, north, and eastern perimeter of the fire. Air operations will continue to support ground crew as they focus on the thumb area above Colorado Highway 14 and in Rocky Mountain National Park. Student at Colorado State University, Caitlin Schiller, filed a lawsuit against university after claiming she was sexually assaulted by wealthy donor Michael Best. While, addressing, while waitressing at football games last fall. Schiller claims he grabbed her thigh so hard it left bruises. She says this happened at three different football games. Best attorney says his accusations are false. However, according to the report filed, the district attorney's office investigators found Schiller to be credible and subjected to unwanted sexual contact. After the university failed to provide Schiller with the proper protection in order to ensure her safety. She has now filed a lawsuit against CSU in hopes of changing school policy. Tomorrow is the last day to vote in the 2020-2021 ASCSU election. You can vote for Colorado State University's next student body president and vice president, as well as the next speaker of the Senate for the Associated Students of Colorado State University. Voting is available on RamWeb until September 16th. To learn more about all the candidates running, as well as more about the election yourself, you can visit ascsu.colostate.edu slash election. We covered the Speaker of the Senate debate last Tuesday and the presidential debate on Wednesday in a live stream event that you can still watch on CTV's YouTube channel. We'll keep you informed about the results of the election as they come out. Well, speaking of elections, voting season is just around the corner. Citizens of Colorado are trying to find out how to get their vote casted. However, controversy behind the process has started to arise. The Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, recently sued the Postal Service after the delivery of mailers in state contained information that wasn't accurate for the state's all-mail ballot. Voting system Colorado automatically sends out ballots by mail without the need for a request. It is also recommended that voters mail in their ballot a minimum of a week before the weekend election. The state allows ballots returned by mail as well as at designated collection sites operated by county election offices. And of course, voters are also able to cast their ballot in person. If you love hitting the slopes, you may need to plan your skiing getaway earlier than you normally would. Many resorts in Colorado are launching their reopening plan and some, like Vail, will now require reservations to visit the park. However, Altera Mountain Co. announced that most Icon Pass designations do not require reservations at this time. Altera Mountain Co. has yet to release their reopening plan along with Winter Park and Steamboat, but there are discussions of limited tickets sold per day to avoid overcrowding. Winter Park did announce, however, they will be prioritizing their season pass holders in regards to ticket dispersion. We'll keep you updated on new developments on that as well. Students gathered today at the plaza with a creative approach to talk about what they both lost and gained during COVID-19 comeback. So we're um, just kind of bringing a question that people can feel free to come and answer and kind of a self-reflection type deal of um, a place where people can gather in small quantities and uh, just share our experience with like what we've gained and what we've lost during this whole time and kind of bring people in, make connections and we love, we all love Jesus here that are a part of doing this so we're just trying to extend that love to other people. What a clever way to bring people together and start a conversation. It is definitely a nice way to connect with other students about their experiences during the last few months. 
It's a bird. It's a plane. Well, in this case, it actually is a bird. The e-scooter company recently released their newest model of electric scooter named the Bird 2. The Bird 2 comes to Fort Collins after its recent release in San Francisco, Yonkers, and Bordeaux. This new model of the e-scooter is supposed to feature things like theft prevention encryption, puncture-resistant tires, and a longer-lasting battery. The Bird 2 even claims to have the longest-lasting battery of any e-scooter on the market. However, despite all the new upgrades, birds aren't being used by students at Colorado State University, and many of these electric scooters sit unused for days. If you're interested in what other features the new model of scooter has, you can learn more at 2.bird.co. On Monday, Colorado became the fourth state to pass the Crown Act, a recent law aiming to protect hair discrimination in public education, working environments, housing, public accom accommodation, and in advertising. The Crown Act redefines cr discrimination against hair texture, hair type, or the hairstyle that is historically associated with race. This law, which has already passed in California, New York, and New Jersey, is just one of the several policies enacted by state legislators in response to protests and conversations around the U.S. in demand for social justice and reform. A Colorado tradition that has been going strong for over a century has recently been canceled due to coronavirus concern. The National Western Stock Show won't be happening this year due to officials stating that the event could not comply with health and safety guidelines that the CDC has put in place to combat COVID-19. The stock show is the largest agricultural show in Colorado and has a huge economic impact for the state. According to the show's association, it generates more than $6 million in state and local tax revenue each year. Additionally, the show benefits business in Colorado with the increase in tourists in January. Both postponing and moving the event to a virtual platform were discussed, but ultimately dismissed. However, it is said that for those whose last year it would have been to compete due to the age restriction, will be allowed one more year of competition. 2,000 people attended the Lettuce Worship event at the City Park in Fort Collins and did not follow safety guidelines for COVID-19. Most of the attendees were not social distancing or wearing their masks. The organizers did not request an event permit with Larimer County as well. The event lasted for around two hours with live music, prayers, and baptisms. The organizers used their First Amendment right to justify their reasoning on why they hosted the event. The city is now discussing to improve enforcement of COVID-19 guidelines when people are not following the county's safety procedures. The city of Fort Collins has not stated if there will be any consequences toward the organizers of the event. Officials in the state of Colorado are noticing a slight increase in COVID-19 cases within col college campuses and universities. The past few weeks, there have been a rise in cases for people between the ages of 10 and 29, and more specifically within the college age group. According to statistics, first and second year college students are most likely to contract the virus due to social gatherings and the close proximity to one another in the residence halls or sorority and fraternity houses. The fear is that transmission within the college campuses will translate to a spike in cases in the overall town or community. Governor Jared Polis said despite all of this, the state is still seeing low positivity rates and hospitalizations, as well as below ca capacity. While Fort Collins Council has adopted a one-year city budget of $696 million, the budget proposal is set to start in 2021, funding grants and contributions for 2020, which is currently projected at a total cost of $486.1 million. The governmental revenue in Fort Collins is occurred from sales used in property taxes. According to City Manager Darren Atterbury, the budget accounts for 69% of the governmental revenue. That's all the news we have for you today, Rams. But make sure to stay tuned because Jenna is coming up next with entertainment on CTV.